in the lead, South African scientists have identified a potential variant of interest of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Researchers from the National Institute of Communicable Diseases and the KZN Research Innovation and Sequencing Platform say it was first detected in May this year during the country's third wave of infections. As it stands, more than 13% of adults are not fully vaccinated against COVID-19. On Friday, Health Minister Dr. Joe Paisa said this is problematic as South Africa's third COVID-19 wave is continuing to behave in an unpredictable manner and it's notably different from the country's first and second waves. Paisa said that the government was now considering the possibility of booster shots as well as mandatory vaccines. Joining us now from the KZN research platform is infectious diseases specialist Dr. Richard. Richard Lessels. Dr. Lessels, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. Some concerns this morning. Already we are dealing with the Delta variant. Uh, in fact, uh, struggling as it continues to ravage the country. As you and I speak, we, uh, there's a 10,173 new COVID-19 cases and more than 270 deaths, all within a 24-hour cycle. What does this new variant look like? Yeah, good morning, Paul, and good, good morning to the, to the viewers. Um, so, the, I mean, this new variant that we've detected, I mean, this is, again, just from this network of, of labs that we have around the country that are monitoring the virus and monitoring how the virus evolves. And as this is something that we flagged just because um, of the pattern of mutations it has. But at the moment, as you've highlighted, uh, the Delta variant is still completely dominant in, in every province of the, of the country and, and is responsible for kind of over 90% of the, of the cases uh, based on our genomic surveillance. So this new variant is just something that we're keeping a very close watch on and we're doing some work in the laboratory to understand how this new variant behaves and what properties it might have. It has some similar mutations to some of the other variants of concern that we've seen, like the Delta and like the previous Beta uh, variant that kind of caused the second wave. And so we don't know how that pattern of mutations affects the behavior of the virus. So we're doing the work in the laboratory and just monitoring uh, where we're detecting it and, and how much we're detecting it. But at the moment, we're still seeing it in very small numbers. Um, and it's certainly not uh, looking like it's taking over from the Delta variant. And in terms of perhaps breaking down the jargon and making this uh, uh, clear and easy to understand, there are words uh, like variants of interest and variants of concern. What does this speak to when it comes to this uh, uh, new variant? So at the moment, this is neither. This is just something that we flagged here in South Africa and we're trying to understand better. And obviously, as always, we've reported it uh, to the World Health Organization and to international partners so that they also are aware of it. Um, but what it needs uh, to become a variant of interest, we would have to see it uh, spreading more. We'd have to see it in bigger numbers, at least in, in one part of the country. Um, or we would need to have some, some information from laboratory studies uh, that show that this virus has different properties from um, the kind of original virus and, and some of the other variants. So, so these terms, as you say, this technical jargon, it's just kind of uh, a way of classifying um, how much information you have about the, the variant and, and what the properties are that it might have. Are we seeing and detecting this variant in other countries at all? Yeah, that, well, that was one of the things that kind of, that we kind of flagged was that as well as 
detecting it in small numbers in South Africa, um, it had been picked up in a few overseas locations. So for example, the UK and Switzerland uh, and China. And there it was just kind of a single case that had been seen with this. And that suggests to us that those, those may be associated with people traveling from South Africa because this variant and its kind of uh, parents, if you like, um, have not been seen anywhere else in the, in the world according to the, the surveillance that's done. So it looks like this has come from South Africa and then, and then been kind of exported by, by people traveling. Um, and that was, that was one of the things that suggested to us actually it may be, there may be a little bit more of it around here in South Africa than, than we're detecting in, in our surveillance. There are, of course, um, some really frightening concerns as uh, one looks into the probabilities around this variant. One such concern is uh, as it goes to the explanation on variants of concern, saying that uh, um, it may reduce the effectiveness of vaccines or treatments amongst other factors. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't know that yet. And, and actually what we know about these variants of concern, even the, the, the beta and the delta that we're now seeing, um, is, is that actually the vaccines uh, remain very effective at protecting people against severe disease and hospitalization and death. And so the virus hasn't evolved in a way to, to get round that level of, of protection. Um, and looking at the pattern of mutations in this, in this new variant, um, it, it doesn't look different enough from what we've seen already that that's likely to change. It's likely that the vaccines will, will still offer very strong protection against severe disease. Um, and, and that's very reassuring. Mm -hmm. And it's a reminder that actually the, the only way we stop these new variants popping up and emerging in South Africa, in other parts of the world, is to slow the transmission down, is to get better control of this virus. And the main way that we do that, one of the mainstays of, 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 of our response is vaccination and getting as many people vaccinated as possible. So far, what we're talking about here is the C1.2 variant, and there's also one that is the C1. What are the differences between the two? Well, the C1 is kind of the parent, if you like. So that was, a, that was something that we actually detected in the first wave of infections. So way back um, over a year ago now, um, and that had then kind of almost disappeared. We, we didn't detect it again in, in uh, the second wave of in, infections, as you know, because that was dominated by the, by the beta variant. And then this, this virus popped up again, and we could see that it had descended from the C.1, if you like. So it had, we could show that it had evolved from that from that virus, um, but it was very different. It had picked up a lot of extra mutations. Um, and so the, we can see clearly how the virus evolved again. We don't know for sure um, how, that's, how that's happened, whether it's just happened through the normal person-to-person -person spread or whether it could be again that the virus has evolved within an individual um, who has maybe a prolonged infection, a persistent infection, and the virus has evolved and then has, has spread into the population. And that's something that we're still investigating with, with many groups around the country. So what happens now with, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of sort of questions hanging in the air as uh, more and more research needs to be conducted. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, the bottom line is that we will continue tracking this virus and continue monitoring how the virus evolves. And we should expect that we, we are going to see more variants emerge, unfortunately. And as I say, the, it doesn't change the fundamentals of this pandemic, is that we need to get on top of the spread of this virus. We need to get as many people vaccinated, uh, firstly to protect them against getting sick, getting severe disease and getting hospitalized and dying, to protect our health services, uh, and also to help to slow the transmission down and to kind of prevent the emergence of these new variants. Now, when it comes to the effectiveness of vaccines in fighting other unfamiliar variants where are we standing what does that mean for for South Africa and the world at large in terms of efficacy rates within our vaccines well we we have two very good vaccines in the program here in South Africa where we have good evidence that they, they offer very high levels of protection against severe disease and hospitalization and death, even with the, the Delta variant that, that is now, as you say, so, so, so dominant. And so the, there's, there's no concern there. These vaccines are very effective. And if there are people who haven't yet been vaccinated, they, sh they should go as soon as they possibly can uh, to get themselves and their families uh, vaccinated. And very lastly, before we let you go, um, are there any perhaps abnormal symptoms that uh, one could be looking at when it comes to perhaps uh, trying to understand which variant uh, one could have, which strain one could have? Or, you know, how would that work when it comes to perhaps observing abnormalities? Yeah, it, it, it's very difficult to know with, with these new variants. Uh, fundamentally, the, 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 the disease remains the same and the symptoms remain the same. There may be some subtle differences, uh, but whether they're due to the variant or whether they're due to the fact that um, we see some infections happening in people that are partially vaccinated or fully vaccinated, and, and that changes the symptom profile. We don't really know still. Uh, and, and the other thing is there's, there's, there's kind of more younger people being in, infected with the, with the Delta variant. So fundamentally, this remains a respiratory infection. And, and so if you have uh, upper respiratory tract symptoms such as uh, sore throat, uh, runny nose, headache, fever, chills, um, or particularly if you have kind of cough and shortness of breath, then these are the symptoms that should prompt you to, to go and get tested uh, and to keep yourself isolated from other people. Very well. Thank you so much. Let's uh, leave it there for now. KwaZulu Natal Research Innovation and Sequencing Platform is Infectious Disease Specialist Richard, uh, Dr. Richard Ressels. They're giving us some insight on the potential variant of interest that has been identified in South Africa. Uh, the teams uh, across the country, of course, are studying very careful the components of this new variant to determine it, its uh, effectiveness and its impact on the vaccine. But uh, the moral of the story is there is that the more people that are vaccinated, the better, especially when it comes to new strains that uh, Dr. Uh, was saying that we will continue to see many of these strains popping up. But uh, vaccination is key.